From a broadcasting perspective, suburban radio anchor, reporter, and now author of the WYN Experience, Stu Cohen looks back on 1970s and broadcasting and WYN Request Radio. Welcome to Community Connection, Stu Cohen. Well, thank you. So good to have you here, and, and uh, dare I say, an old friend. <laughs> we won't say how old. <laughs> okay. Well, you wrote this book as kind of a memoir from your experience and an overview history of WYN. Why was this a story that needed to be told? Well, it needed to be told because, uh, you know, in time people are forgetting what it was like uh, before computers and before, you know, cell phones and, you know, and, and this, the broadcasting aspect of it is, is a unique niche because what we did, for example, uh, you know, we would use analog and we'd use, uh, you know, grease pencils and we'd, you know, edit tape and, and we'd go cover a story and we'd try to pi find a pay phone. Well, that, you know, you try to tell a young person that today and they, they look at you like, we're from outer space. A and so I wanted, to, I, wanted, I wanted people to know what it was like, and, and that was my niche, that, the, the radio aspect of it. So I, I, it was a story I thought needed to be told from the technological aspect of it. Well, and people might hear this and say, W-Y-E-N, why does that sound so familiar? So give us a little backstory about W-Y-E-N and its role in Chicago radio. Well, W-Y-E-N was owned by Ed Walters and uh, Carol Walters, and the idea that they had was to try to keep people that were uh, broadcast talented in the Chicago area rather than to have his experience where he had to go to you know other states and then work his way back to his homeland uh, he wanted people to stay there he didn't want to lose the talent and so you know people like Gary Meyer of WGN today and Bob Roberts of WBBM would be able to stay local and and, and we wouldn't lose that talent and that was the same with me. I mean, I, you know, I was thinking, oh, I'm going to go to Guam or someplace, you know, and then work my way back. So Ed Walters thought, let's keep people here. It was tough for him to get the, uh, the approval. It was the last license uh, for the Chicagoland. But he was able to get it, fought for it, got it. And his idea, keep people local, and he, that's what he did. And WYN was a 50,000 powerhouse FM mm -hmm. station. And it, at times, it was the only station you could get within the walls of Woodfield Mall. <laughs> that, that's right. And, you know, it, one of the things that was really great for my family, my grandmother lived in Chicago, and um, she was able to hear WYEN. She was in a high-rise uh, near downtown, and she could hear me on the air. And, it, and, and for me, that was just a great thing, that I could have family hearing me. It was unbelievable. Well, the book highlights the stories, as mm -hmm. you mentioned, some of the names, but of the talent that went through there and from the time it went on the air until the time that the license changed over to uh, Z Rock, if we can say. We went from Y to Z. And um, it, it's just amazing because the opportunity to get into local radio no longer exists the way it did right. in right. that era. And, and so tell us a little bit about how you got your start at YEN. It, I have to say, first of all, I was lucky to get in, and I, I really owe Ed Walters a lot because um, I started really late uh, in radio. You know, it, was, it really was in college, and I, I had nothing to do one day, and, and uh, the assistant news director uh, was in um, radio at uh, WIDB, and I said, can I tag along with you? And um, I started really late, and so I didn't have the, the experiences that some of the other guys had. And so... Um, what happened to even get the job at WYN? It was it was a fluke. Um, my brother-in-law was a, a manager of Golden Bear Restaurant in, in Mount Prospect. The owner, Ed Walters, lived in Prospect Heights. Every morning he would go for uh, breakfast, usually coffee, uh, right there at, at the Golden Bear. And so one day uh, my brother-in-law com comes up to him, pours him coffee as he did with all the other customers, and they got to talking. And, they, and he told about me, and um, Ed said, well, just have them send a resume and a, and, and a tape. And I did that. And I waited a week. And I never heard anything. And so, and so then I, I was just really just walking around saying, what do I do? What do I do? I was working at Sure Brothers at the time in Evanston making uh, microphones. And so I, um, I called uh, Ed. I talked to uh, Diane Finkler, the secretary. And I said, you know, he hasn't got my tape. They said, well, come on in and do an audition there at the radio station. And I did it. And I was really nervous. Uh, but... Uh, he, he accepted me, and so I started uh, part time uh, doing news. And from there, you know, it really took off. But uh, it, it was uh, luck. That it was luck, basically, that two people were at the right place at the right time. My brother-in-law and Ed. And I think that's a WYEN story because I think all of us, and, and I'm honored to say that I'm in the book and I'm a, a right, YEN right. alum. And and my story is, 
I was hired to fill an overnight shift and I was 19 years old and Ed Walters stayed all night to make mm -hmm. sure that I was okay because mm -hmm. in those days, you know, it was a one-man show. You had an FCC mm -hmm. third class third class license and you, you took the transmitter readings and you kind of did everything. So He was a good guy. He was a very good yeah. guy and the opportunities. It, it's a wonderful story. It's uh, available. It's who should read this book? Not just people right. who work there, but who should read this book? Well, people that you know, like radio, of course, people that like nostalgic radio who you know, have a can tie into stations like LS and GN and you know, like the old time radio. Um, people who are thinking about getting into broadcasting or, or thinking about um, you know, getting into something that has to do with standing in front of the public and doing something. You know, the experiences that we had and the struggles that we had to know that you're not alone you know, that there are others that went through it, maybe, you know, 30, 40 years ago, but the struggles are still the same. Right. And, and to know that other people did, did that and survived, and that's a nice story to, to know that you're not alone. It is a nice story. The WYENexperience.com for more information. It's also available at Barnes & Noble for more information. Stu, so right. good to see you. Thanks Thank for you being much. with us today.